This trunk area was prepared by using plasma gouging. The surface of the frame rails and top edge of the inner valance are nice, clean, and undamaged. Okay, this is the plasma cutting system we'll be using, the Hypertherm PowerMax 45XP. Want to make sure we've got the amps turned all the way down to 10, and that we go from straight cutting to gouging. All right, we're good to go. This two-part photo shows the 45 degree angle of the torch position for gouging spot welds. It also shows the up and down movement for the feathering technique. I'll also use a triggering technique, starting and stopping the arc. Map and mark all the spots with a marker that will contrast against the metal. Place the end of the torch just beyond the edge of the spot weld. Next, push the trigger and start the arc, warming up the metal until it glows. This happens fast. The metal of the top layer will start to melt or burn away. As soon as you see that bottom layer, flick the torch up. That moment will allow the metal to cool slightly, then flick it back down. Watch carefully as the pressure from the arc literally washes away the top layer, pushing the molten metal down the groove you've created. Then repeat the process on the other side. You can see where there's a small piece of metal that is still attached. Just give it a little light gouge and wash it away. Now this is really cool. Look at how easy that top layer separates from the bottom layer. It lifts right up. This camera angle allows us to really see how the arc is only gouging that top layer. As you're gouging, watch closely for the bottom layer. As soon as you see the top of that bottom layer, flick the torch up. See how clean that bottom layer is? It's not being damaged by the gouging process because flicking the torch up or triggering the arc on or off allows the metal to cool slightly. Use the pressure from the arc to wash away the melted metal. See that dark line between the two layers? That's the air gap and the melted metal is not getting washed or blown into it. The layers are not being bonded by the process. Any slag should just pop off. Once you get the hang of this technique, it's actually a lot of fun to do. The main trick is either releasing the trigger or flicking that torch up as soon as the metal begins to glow. Then flick the torch back down or press the trigger, basically feathering the trigger or the movement of the torch. Then just use a seam buster or chisel to pry up that top layer. Sometimes there'll be a small piece that's still attached, but give the metal a twist and it should come right up. Find some old car parts with spot wells and practice and refine your technique before you try this on your actual project. Here's a close look at what's left of the spot welds on the bottom layer. They grind off pretty quick. I'm working on the frame rail of a 1967 Firebird. The main sections of the trunk pan have been cut away and a spot weld ribbon over the frame rails needs to be removed. The thinner your sheet metal, the lighter the touch with the plasma torch. Try holding the torch at a flatter angle and bouncing the arc off the metal. Each situation will be different depending on the thickness of the metal. Older, worn, rusted metal will quickly melt, so watch closely and move the torch quickly. Here I'm using an older PowerMax 45. You don't need a new system to use this technique. In fact, you can use any plasma system with a gouge setting. Over the years, I've tried many different methods to remove spot welds. Grinding and drilling in this gouging method is so much easier. With a little practice, the technique is easy to perfect. Experiment by holding the torch and gouging at various angles. Get comfortable with it. The more spot welds you gouge, the better you'll get at it. Now I just grind away what's left of the spot welds and I'm done. Gouging the spot welds on this frame rail took less than five minutes. And once you get the technique down, it's actually a lot of fun to do. So have some fun gouging spot welds.